Well, I just got my order from Hobby King, and this uh, three-axis Orange RX flight stabilization system came in the mail. And there's the part number for that. And I also ordered some of these little uh, mail-to-mail extensions for hooking it up to the receiver. And the part number for that is right here. When I first opened this up, the first thing that caught my eye was there's some little dip switches down in here. Right in there. I don't know if you can see them. See if I can get a little closer. And uh, what, the, what they do is they actually do a reverse and normal for the rudder, elevator, and aileron. But it just doesn't reverse them. It actually applies uh, bias in the direction or against the direction of travel. So you have to be careful when you're setting these. Uh, we can talk about those later. There's also some gain pots right here and there's three of them and it's roll, pitch, and yaw. Now I understand the roll is probably the ailerons. Pitch I think is the elevator and then uh, yaw would probably be the rudder. But we'll find out about that later. And then another thing that was puzzling about this whole unit was there's some pins over in this area and uh, they were labeled, I don't know if you can see that right here, but they're called AVR ISP. And what we found out, although they do look like they're for hooking on more of these servo extension wires, they're actually not. This group of six pins goes to uh, a programmer such as an Atmel uh, programmer probably for flashing the firmware. Uh, I don't intend on doing that because I don't even know if there are any firmware flashes yet. But the, uh, the little programmer is available from Hobby King too. And uh, like I said it's an Atmel. It'll hook to the USB port and allow this to be flashed. Okay, so next we're going to uh, mount this thing on a plane and kind of test bed it and see how we hook it up and what it does. There's some connections right here on the back and basically there's a battery connection. There's two aileron connections left and right so if you happen to have two aileron servos you can just plug them in here and this will automatically reverse one of them. One will be the reverse of the other. And then there's elevator and rudder. So basically all we got to do is uh, run the uh, aileron, elevator, and rudder from the receiver output to the input on this module and then uh, run the output of this module to the, to the servos. And it'll pick up the power I found out right off the bus so you don't need to connect up the battery if you don't want to. It'll pick up the uh, power from the receiver bus. Okay, so let's put it on the plane and see what it does. Okay, we've mounted the, uh, the flight stabilizer and the receiver on top of the wing right here so they're easy to see. May not be the best location for flying, but we want to make them visible so we can show the wiring. And what we have here is, here's the two wires right here that come from the elevator and rudder servos and they're plugged into the outputs of the three axis system right here and then we have the two aileron wires which are these plugged into a Y connector and then the Y connector is going into the right aileron channel now like I said before, you could just plug both of these straight in, one in the right aileron channel and one in the left aileron channel, and uh, it would work like that. But my problem was I'd already mechanically reversed the servos so that when I plugged them into the three-axis flight stabilizer, uh, it reversed them again and then I ended up with the wrong thing. They were both working in the same direction. So I had to go and put the Y connector on 
If you're building a plane from scratch, you can just mount these so they're not reversed to each other, and you can plug directly into the three-axis gyro. Okay, so we got wires also coming off the receiver, the output of the receiver here. We got three wires for the aileron, rudder, and elevator, and they come and plug into the inputs on the three-axis system right here. And then we got one more wire, of course, going to the receiver from the ESC to power the whole thing. So, when we plug it up, I'm going to plug in the ESC over here to the battery. There we go. So there it is. Now, I don't know if you can see this in the camera. But you can definitely hear it, right? You can hear the servos hunting. That's one thing that was mentioned on some other videos that they do hunt a little bit. But when the plane does a roll, you can see the ailerons compensating for that roll. But they always go back to center afterward. So, so once you do your maneuver, the servos all return to center and the plane will stay in that orientation. So be aware of that. If you're heading down into the ground, it remembers the last instance of no control and it'll just remain in that position head to straight into the ground unless you do something. It's going to try to maintain whatever orientation it was last in. So this isn't going to be an autopilot. It's just going to be help to keep your plane stable in the air. Now you can see the rudder when I move the plane back and forth how the rudder compensates. But it's compensating the wrong way. We'll have to fix that in a little bit. The let's see, the elevator. The elevator seems to be working right. Okay. Well, that was pretty simple to hook up. <clears throat> so the next thing we have to do is we're going to have to reverse the rudder, and that's where we're going to use this little dip switch. We have to move that one, I guess, forward. Okay, it just, it's more of a rocker switch. It didn't make a click, it just rocked over. And I rocked it over. Let's try it again and see what happens. So when the nose tries to go this way, the rudder tries to bring it back. So that looks correct to me. One of the aspects with this unit is that it will not turn on and off remotely. So if you've got a receiver, you've got a gyro switch on your transmitter, you're not going to be able to connect those up to turn this on and off. It doesn't have that feature. Some of the more fancier gyro systems have that where you can start the plane in flight, get it up there, and then turn the gyros on. So you won't be able to do that with this. But this is supposed to be Hobby King's answer to the AS3X. That's how they advertise it. And the AS3X doesn't turn off and on either. And the AS3X also does a little hunting like this too. So it's very similar in both of those features. It's only a $15 unit, so for what it does, it'll probably be pretty good. Now here's a plane that actually has AS3X technology, a three-axis system. And it's got four little servos, and um, see, there's one, there's one, there's one, and there's one. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and uh, turn this on and show you how this has the similar hunting features of the Hobby King 3-axis system. You can probably hear that also hunting. And you can see it compensating in the same manner.
So the e-flight system basically does the same thing. Acts in a similar fashion. I think maybe one of the differences is when you set this one down, it does quiet down pretty good and the hunting stops quite a bit. There's still a little there, but not much. So maybe with eventual firmware updates, Hobby King may get theirs quieted down too, but I don't think it's a, a real detriment. It should still operate even though it hunts. So in part two of this video, we'll have a motor on this plane and then try to fly it and see how this three-axis system does.